You know, I've been using Logic Pro for the iPad since it was introduced, and now that I've had quite a lot of time to get familiar with it, I think it's safe to say that this is the first professional app that I've used for the iPad that not only takes advantage of what's inside the iPad in terms of performance, because we've seen that before, but it also takes advantage of all the benefits that being an iPad brings to a piece of software. And so today, I want to dive into my experience with Logic Pro on the iPad and why I think that it is the best professional app for audio creators on the iPad. So let's dive in. So just for a bit of context, I've been using Logic Pro as my main audio editor for a long time now. I started learning how to use it back in college and I've just been using it ever since. And because I was so familiar with the app on the Mac, I was afraid that getting it on the iPad Pro meant that we weren't gonna get Logic on the iPad and we were gonna get something more along the lines of GarageBand Plus. But I was very, very happily surprised. Now, the first time I started Logic on my iPad, there was one key thing I wanted to do before anything else to make sure that I would be able to use this the way I had always used Logic Pro on the Mac, which was to try out the key commands. And I'm very happy to report the key commands did in fact survive the transition from Mac OS to iPad OS. That is such a huge deal because one of the big things that Apple talked about when they introduced Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro for the iPad was that they made them to be touch oriented. And when I first saw that, my heart sank because I was afraid that they were just gonna remove everything that's useful about the keyboard for both of the apps. And they kind of did for Final Cut Pro, but that's another video. But at least with Logic Pro, it's all still there, and it was super easy to just hop in and start using it. And I'm sure for some Logic Pro users, that's all they need to hear. You can use the mouse and keyboard just like you did on the Mac, and now you can do it on the iPad, so you don't have to go buy a laptop to take with you. You can just use your iPad. And for those people, that's awesome. That's really cool. But like I said at the start of the video, this app also takes advantage of the fact that it's on an iPad. And being on an iPad, one of the benefits is that it has a touchscreen and a pencil. Now, for me personally, I'm not going to use the touchscreen for things like audio track placement just because I don't feel like it's precise enough. But one of the things that I have messed around with a little bit that is so cool is the fact that you can just pull up an on-screen piano and play out something if you really need to lay down a background audio track with some piano or you can add some other audio samples to the piano to add those as well. You can do all of that right on the iPad and you don't need to go hooking up a MIDI keyboard. That is actually really nice, and I feel like that's going to come in super handy for me in a couple projects coming up. And like I said, the other piece of hardware that Logic Pro could potentially take advantage of is the Apple Pencil, and it takes advantage of it in such a cool way. So whenever I've done audio mixing with Logic Pro on the desktop before, what I'll do if I need to change the volume mid-track or change an effect or pan, whatever the case may be, I'll select the track, I'll expand it, and then I'll add a keyframe wherever that effect needs to start changing, and then another one that's a little further ahead of it to allow for a little bit of a transition. And then wherever that effect needs to go back to where it was, or the volume has to go back or whatever, I'll add two more keyframes, the exact same way I added the first two, and then I'll grab the center section that's just affected by the two center keyframes, and I'll drag it up and down, depending on whether it needs to go up or down, whatever the case may be. But Logic on the iPad does it a little differently. This is actually really cool. You can draw keyframe effects with Logic Pro using the Apple Pencil on the iPad. That is so cool because what you don't think about when you're doing those hard keyframe adjustments on the desktop is the fact that if you don't get it quite right, it just sounds like whatever you're adding just falls off a cliff. Whereas with this, you can curve it down and have it be really aggressive at the start and then kind of taper to whatever you want it to be as opposed to just a line. And I know some people probably like that linear effect, but for some people they want something that sounds maybe a bit more natural. So you can just draw it with the Apple Pencil. That is so cool. And what that means is that when I use Logic Pro on the iPad, I have just as much flexibility, if not a little bit more on the iPad than I already had on the desktop. And that's also including things like what I mentioned earlier with the key commands and being able to use the mouse and keyboard. I could just use it exactly the way I did on the desktop and then potentially do even more with the ability to play my own tracks with a piano and not have to plug anything in. And of course, being able to hand draw keyframes, which is again, just so cool. And then on top of all of that, you have a ton of plugins, loops, and sound samples that you can then add to Logic Pro for the iPad. And I'm pretty sure if it's not as many, it's pretty darn close to as many different options for add-ons as what you already had for the desktop version. So you can not only start with a really solid base, but expand it, which is so nice. And I know I said that one of the things you can do is play the keyboard on the touchscreen without having to plug in an external MIDI keyboard, but if you do want to plug in an external MIDI keyboard or an audio interface, 
you can, which is actually one of my biggest irritants before Logic Pro came to the iPad, which was that there was no core audio support to the same level as what a Mac had. If you plugged in an audio interface and tried to get GarageBand to do it, GarageBand would have no idea what to do with an audio interface. But now, it just works, which is such an Apple thing to say, but in this instance, I had a full interface set up to record my drum kit, and I had to bring some kind of Mac with me, even if it was super old, because it just wouldn't recognize it on the iPad with GarageBand. As soon as I added Logic Pro, it showed right up without any extra steps. It was fantastic, and it recognized both channels, so I could record my overhead and my kick drum, and then if I decide to expand out from there with individual mics per drum, I can do that too. That is so nice. And then if I want to be lazy, I can use the built-in drummer, which of course is something we've had in GarageBand for a while, but they did bring it to Logic Pro, but I prefer to actually record my drums. That's my little aside. And if you want to know how it actually sounds being recorded and mixed through Logic Pro, I'll leave a link to my other channel right up there. I did a full drum cover recorded and fully edited with Logic Pro on the iPad Pro. Now, of course, I did edit the video on my own desktop with Final Cut Pro for the Mac, but the actual audio track was done right here on Logic Pro. But okay, let's just say for the sake of argument that you have an incredibly comprehensive desktop setup and you need the screen space because you have a ton of windows open when you're using Logic on the Mac and you're only going to mix there, but you do want to use the iPad as a portable recording device because it's more convenient than dragging your entire desktop with you. How do you move whatever you recorded on the iPad from the iPad over to the Mac? Well, they made it super easy as well. See, because when Apple officially launched Logic Pro for the iPad, they also pushed an update to Logic for the Mac. And when they did that, they introduced a feature called Round Trip. And what this allows you to do is take an active project out of Logic Pro for the iPad and either airdrop it, move it to iCloud, whatever the case may be. And then once you have it on the Mac, you can just open it like a regular Logic project and everything you did on the iPad will just carry over to the Mac. Every mixing setting, every compressor setting, everything you've done, all the plugins, all of it just comes up. And if you wanna go from the Mac back to the iPad with all the mixes you made on the Mac taking effect on the iPad, you can do that too. It's so nice. For me personally, this is an awesome feature and I've been using the crap out of it because right now at time of recording, I think I have like six or seven active Logic projects just sitting up in iCloud because when I go to record my drums, I can just open them right out of iCloud in Logic on the iPad, record what I need, do some mixing, whatever. And then when I'm done, I just close Logic on the iPad. I come home, I open up the same iCloud drive right on my Mac, open the same project and it brings up the full desktop version for me to finish all the mixing that I want to do. It is so nice and I wish more apps would do something like this where they have a full-blown feature that works on both the Mac and the iPad where you can just seamlessly hand projects back and forth. They haven't even done that with Final Cut. You can send Final Cut projects in one direction and you can't send it back once it's gone. But you can do that with Logic. You can send it both ways and constantly change things back and forth. It is so nice. You know, it's actually funny. When I start my reviews, I try to go into them as neutral as possible and maybe even a little skeptical during the beginning of my review processes. And in this case, I had actually used Final Cut Pro before I had even touched Logic Pro for the iPad. And I was extremely skeptical of this piece of software because of my experience with Final Cut Pro. And so the fact that I started even further into the skepticism range than I ever have for any other product this overcame every piece of skepticism I had and proved that it's actually going to be, for me, an extremely useful tool, not just as a companion to the desktop version of Logic Pro, but as its own standalone piece of software that I can use without needing to rely on something else to get the job done. And that is extremely, extremely impressive, considering that I don't think we've really had something like that for the iPad, at least not for the creative professional, since the iPad Pro came out. So being able to do that, that was extremely refreshing. And just as an added bonus, I did try it on the iPad mini. It does work on the iPad mini. And I did actually record a drum track with it and it came out fine, but that's not a use case that I would actively recommend unless you're in a pinch or you just have one of these and want to use Logic Pro. I'd recommend having a slightly bigger screen like the base model iPad or the iPad Air and ideally an iPad Pro, but 
if you're in a pinch, I guess, yeah, you can do it on the iPad mini. The only criticism I could really level at Logic Pro for the iPad is the fact that unlike the desktop version where it's a $199 license that you buy once and it's there forever, this is a monthly model or a yearly model. You have to pay either $499 a month or $50 for the entire year. That does suck. I like the one-time license model, but even with that, I looked around at some of the options that are out there and you've got Creative Cloud, but they don't have Audition for the iPad, at least not a usable version. GarageBand is free, but GarageBand, especially now that I've been using Logic Pro, just kind of sucks. And aside from Voice Recorder, which I just use the Voice Memos app to do this kind of stuff where there's a mic sitting right here below me and then the camera's in front of me, that's not going to get you very far. And there's no other real good alternative to a professional audio mixing tool on the iPad. So really, if you are going to be using it as a professional tool, I feel like you could easily make that $50 that would be required for an entire year in way less than a year and still have a lot of room for profit. That's just me. I've already made my money back for the year that I bought for this, but I don't know. That's the only thing I can think of to really criticize on this is that we don't get a one-time payment model and it's just a constant annual or yearly or that's what annual means. <laughs> Monthly or annually. That's what I meant to say. But either way, that's my big criticism is just the fact that it's not a buy it once and keep it forever format, which is what I prefer. But if the competition is not really that close and this tool is as good as I feel like it is and it's only $5 a month or $50 a year, I feel like that's actually not that bad. But I'll be curious to know what you all think. Leave some comments down below. Do you use Logic Pro? Do you think that the iPad version might actually be useful to you? Or do you use another tool like uh, Avid Media Composer if you got the big bucks or Adobe Audition if you're still stuck with Adobe or Pro Tools if you're really old school? Let me know down in the comments some conversational discussion. I'll be down there for a little bit throwing in some thoughts here and there if anybody cares and as always i thank you so much for watching this video that's been it if you want to see more stuff like this make sure to subscribe if you like this video make sure to like it and aside from that i'll see you all in the next video make sure to be there and have a good one